Russellville, Alabama, a teacher there by the name of Linda Holcomb has returned home after beating the odds, surviving 234 days in the hospital with COVID-19 and fighting for her life every single second of every day. Linda believes she was hospitalized after coming into contact with an asymptomatic child at her school. She thought she would return home in a week or two, but nine days after testing positive, Linda had to be put on a ventilator. She fought with everything she had while enduring that ventilator, a track, a track, tracheotomy rather, a lung collapse. Because of her perseverance, she was able to leave the hospital just a few weeks ago to return home and is now in the rehabilitation process. Linda is joining me now to talk about her journey. Thank you so much for being here. And my gosh, I see you. I see the oxygen. It makes my heartbeat a little faster. How are you feeling, Linda? I'm, I'm doing much better, thank you. I'm still so, a work in progress. A work in progress, indeed. Yeah. You know, it's been pretty incredible how you just had to fight to stay alive for those yeah. 234 days. Now you're home. You know, what hits you the most when you just think about the number of the of days you were in the hospital and, and, and now you're finally in your sanctuary? I know that I'm nothing short of a miracle. We had people all across the United States praying for me, lifting my name up. And I know that God heard those prayers and that he chose to spare my life. He's got some bigger plan for me. And uh, I am so thankful just to be here. Well, we're thankful that you're with us. You actually went into the hospital in January, I understand, before the vaccine even became available to you. But you actually were able to get fully vaccinated yourself a little later on. So what's your message to everyone out there who, well, they've decided not to be vaccinated um, and they're seeing now that you had to fight for your life and some of them may be fighting for theirs right now as well. Uh, I don't believe the vaccine should be a political point. I think people should make their own minds up. If you've had someone go through what I went through, it's an easy decision to make. Uh, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your children. Do it for your loved ones. My children and my family should not have had to see me fight for that long. And I know the odds were stacked against me. You know, I, I would take one step forward and then something would happen and I'd go two steps, <coughs> excuse me, back. But, uh, you know, taking the vaccine is worth it. By the time I was no longer intubated, my sisters, my children had all been vaccinated both times. And, uh, you know, I understand people being scared about it now, but not knowing if there's enough research done with it. But I also know that smallpox would have never been eradicated if people hadn't been willing to take the vaccine. And this is the same thing. You know, coronavirus is not going to be eradicated unless people step forward and do what needs to be done to slow the spread. So, you know, I urge people to take it. But again, I think it should be their own individual choice. But if they're not going to take it, they need to be mindful of other people. I did all the right things, but I still ended up getting one of the worst cases. I'm in that 1% that they call long COVID. And they don't know how long the symptoms I have now will last. It may be with me another week, another year, the rest of my life. We don't know. So but many I'm unknowns. Glad to be here. 
Oh, we're glad you're here too. And by the way, I know I can actually hear the oxygen pumping and, and your throat gets a little dry. By all means, we're talking live. If you need to get a glass of water or you are having any trouble, please let me know, okay? We don't have to continue. And I in no way, shape or form want to put you um, in an uncomfortable position. So you just let me know, okay, Linda? Okay. Okay, I'm okay. Okay, good. All right, from January to August, um, you only took six steps. I mean, that just, that's mind blowing to me, truly a sign of how hard you fought and, and you continue to fight every single day as, as you just pointed out. What is yeah. the process of rehabilitation like since you had to relearn, relearn everything? And we're looking at video now when you were relearning how to walk and even how to eat. Kind of describe yeah. that to us, Linda, and how you just got the power to keep pushing. I uh, went to an excellent rehab facility. They, uh, I fully believe God put the right people in my path to take care of me from physical therapy to occupational therapy. Uh, I spent four hours a day, six days a week working on therapy. And uh, I had speech therapy, occupational and physical. Uh, it was hard work, things that you take for granted that you can do. And uh, after all the months of being sick, I lost majority of my muscle mass, no strength. Uh, my hands were drawn, but they're better now. Uh, you know, I had to learn to balance again. I had to learn to stand and uh, how to dress myself, how to bathe myself. <laughs> you take for granted that you can change your own clothes and you can't, you have, you have to have help. And as you get stronger, they give you different types of tools to assist you uh, to put your socks on or your pants on. Uh, I had to learn how to bathe myself. You know, it's just like a an infant starting out learning. And, uh, you know, there were days that it was really, really hard and really frustrating that I couldn't do all the things that I wanted to do. But those first six steps that I took let me know that with time, and gaining back strength that I would be able to walk again and hopefully become independent again and take care of myself. Well, I have no doubt that's what's gonna happen. All right, do me a favor, take a drink of water. I saw you grab your bottled water. So while you do that, yes, please, <laughs> that, I appreciate it. You know, you have taught as an elementary school teacher for 29 years. And earlier this month, when you took your first step back home after nine months in the hospital, students and families and staff members, members of the community, it was pretty quite amazing. They all gathered on the streets to welcome you back. What was it like? Yes, to just describe how that felt. And also, Linda, tell me what you're going to tell your kids. You know, kids are so impressionable. Even my kids every day see stories like this, and they worry and they stress and they ask me questions. You're a teacher. How are you going to teach these kids um, about your experience and just the lessons that you've learned? Well, I know they'll have questions and I'll, I will, you know, I'll address the questions. I'm not gonna give them information that's not appropriate for their ages. And, uh, you know, I won't shy away from it, but then again, I'm not gonna burden them with medical talk about what happened. I mean, you know, I'll address the fact that I got really, really sick. And then, of course, we'll also have a lesson about germs in the middle of that. <laughs> and uh, I'm a, I'm a huggy, touchy person. And this the last school year, I had to tell kids, please don't hug me. Mm. You know, I can't hug you back. And, uh, 
you know, like I said earlier, I did all the right things. I germaxed, I socially distanced. I didn't touch their stuff. I didn't touch them. And, uh, you know, it was hard because some of those kids every day, they just want a hug from me. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to address, you know, why we have to do these things. Why do we have to keep from spreading germs as much as possible? Because sometimes it makes people really, really sick like me. Well, you are absolutely right that uh, God had a plan for you. It was not time to go. And you are here with just an amazing story of bravery and strength. And I know those kids cannot wait to embrace you. I hope those hugs can come back, Linda, because we know hugs definitely heal. Linda Holcomb, appreciate you being with us. We're going to stay in touch with you. We want to follow your progress. Sound okay? That sounds great. All right. Lots of love to you, Linda. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.